This is question 9 from paper 1-3 from the June 2020 exams from Cambridge International. In the description below this video, you'll find a link to an image of this question, so you can attempt it before uh, looking at my solutions. In this question, they give us two functions, fx and gx. I've only wrote fx here because we don't need gx until the end. And uh, they give us this very confusing piece of information here. They tell us x is bigger than c, where c is a constant. So a lot of students were actually just thrown by that. Try and ignore things like that. If you understand them, brilliant. That's, you're, on the, you're on the path to getting an A in this question, in, in exams in general. But until then, just ignore it. The question will give you more clues to help you understand what this C is. And I'll explain it as we go on. So the question asks us first to express Fx in the form of X minus A squared um, plus B. It's a very common question. They ask in most exams, it's completing the square. So I, I, won't, uh, I won't explain it fully, I'll just ask you to look up completing the square, but hopefully you'll be able to follow along anyway. Let's write it at fx out again. x squared minus 4x plus 3. Now I left a big gap here, because I'm going to do completing the square here. Now, hopefully it'll become clear to you after looking up completing the square and after the next line, why I'll do this, but I'd love a plus four to be here. I would love plus four to be here, but it's not, it's not there. There's no plus four there. So I'll have to just take it away again. So I'm gonna add it in and take it away. Now, the reason I do this is because this then becomes a perfect square. Now I've had years of practice, so I can see this a little easier. There's other ways, there's other slower ways to get it, and I recommend you look it up. But really what I see now is that this is the same as this. Minus two squared is four. Minus two x, x times minus two is minus four x. And x by x is x squared. So these are the same thing. And that's why I added that four in, to make this work. Now remember what's out here then, minus four plus three is still over here. So this is all fx. fx equals this. Um, so the answer to their question is quite simply uh, 3 minus 4 is minus 1. So it's uh, x minus 2 squared minus 1. That's in this form. That's what they wanted us to do. In this case, a is 2 and b is minus 1. So what else do they want then? It is given that f is a 1, a 1, 1 function, it calls it. A more commonly called 1 to 1 function. Has a has a few of our fancy names. And the best way to describe that, I think, is for me to draw a picture. So I'm going to draw a picture of this function over here. And um, let's see, plus 3 will hit here. And actually, this is very useful to draw pictures. Um, x minus 2, that's plus 2, is going to be an important point to us. Um, and this minus 1, if we get take the square root of it, um, which is 1 again, and plus or minus, that will give us where it hits this axis. This guy is actually the lowest point then down here. So I can roughly just draw this picture like this. And um, go ahead and draw it any other way. You can solve it here. You can use this to solve it. You will just get, uh, let's see, this is two, this is three, and this is one. You'll get something that looks like this. When x gets really big, this function gets really big. When x gets really small, it gets really small. Now, what a one-to-one -one function is, when I put a number in for x, so x is zero, I get an answer out, three. When I put a answer in, let's say three, I get one number out. This is not one-to-one, -one, this function. And here's what goes wrong. So if I put any number in, it's, it works fine. Let's say minus two, I get a number out. There's my answer, when I put minus one in. But if I try to go backwards, if I start here, I ask the, think of it as asking a computer. And what a computer just does is it checks this whole line and it checks if there's any answers. So if I put this in, the computer will give me this answer and this answer. Very confusing for a computer and quite confusing for math, in mathematics as well. That's why we like one-to-one -one functions. This is not one-to-one -one function. Um, it's, uh, yeah, you'll get two answers when you get... When you try to put in two questions more, 
when you try and put in something on the y-axis there's two answers hopefully that's clear enough i recommend you look it up some more in your book and um, look it up on the internet one-to-one -one functions so that's where the c comes in so they tell us x is bigger than some function c they also tell us this is a one-to-one -one function and i know it looks like this so it doesn't look like this is the point x must be bigger than some number c if x was bigger than minus one it would look like this if x is bigger than zero it would look like this is if x is bigger than one the function would look like this this is still not a one-to-one -one function there's two answers here actually maybe that's a better way to think of one-to-one -one function if you drew a line like this you only get one you only hit once so it's fine that direction but if you do a horizontal line like this you're going to hit it twice hit it twice hit it twice hit it once you need to hit it once everywhere so let's say if x is bigger than 2 now now we're, we're getting sore this is now a one-to-one -one function and if i put in a number remember now zero doesn't exist anymore one I don't know why it says minus one. One doesn't exist anymore. Only two exists. If I put two in, if I put two in here, I get, uh, it looks like minus one out. That's I'm just doing a bit of maths in my head there. If I put three in, I get zero out. If I put four in, uh, four minus two is uh, two, four, three. I get three out. If I put four in, I get three out. There's always very clear. And if I try to go backwards, if I get minus one out, what must have gone in? Two. If I get zero out, what must have gone in? Three. If I get, uh, what was it there? Three, was it? If I get three out, what must have gone in? Four. It's, it's a one-to-one -one function now. It's very clear. Uh, another interesting thing is x is bigger than two, but it could have been any other number. Um, it could be x is bigger than three. That's one-to-one. -one. x is bigger than four. That's still one to one. Once we don't get the, the two answers. So the question says, what's the smallest value of C? So the smallest value of C, C is bigger than, um, yeah, C is bigger than or equal to two, uh, would be the, the full answer here. <clears throat> um, I think that's fine if you've done this first part, especially if you draw the picture uh, they would be perfectly happy with this. Otherwise, maybe just write a little English, say, C is bigger than 2 because otherwise there would be multiple um, X values for Y. Something like that. Um, really, the examiner will not be too mean on something like that. If you get the right answer, if you show a bit of understanding where it comes from, they're perfectly happy. Now, for part C, they actually tell us C is 5. So they now tell us um, C equals 5. So let me draw the picture again then. Let's see, rub this bit out, this bit out, this bit out. We're just left with this here. Uh, if I zoom in on that a little bit. Here's 5 here. And let's see, what happens if I put 5 in? 5 minus 2 is, is 3. Uh, 3 squared is 9. 9 minus 1 is 8. Here's 8 here. So I get this, and this um, stays going up like that. So that's what, um, that's what fx looks like when c is equal to 5. It looks like this picture here. So what are they asking us? Find an expression for f mine, uh, the inverse of x, and state the domain of the inverse of x. Actually, okay, so this is much easier once I've drawn the picture here. Because what the inverse is, I put x in, I get the 8 out. The inverse is a function that when I put 8 in, I get 5 out. I put 6 in, uh, what do I get out? Uh, 4, 16, 15. I get 15 out. So an inverse function would be when I put 15 in, I get 6 out. Uh, so really, instead of x going in and this coming out, the inverse is this going in and this coming out. So I can already answer the domain. Uh, yeah, they asked the domain of the inverse. Um, so the domain of fx is, is the bottom line. The domain is the x what goes in. So for fx, 
the domain is x is bigger than 5. For the inverse, uh, so domain, let me write here. I'll answer these a bit backwards. Domain of uh, the inverse of fx is x is bigger than 8. I know it's y on this picture, but when we get the inverse, it all switches. So x is bigger than 8 is the domain. And so how do we get the inverse? Let me, let me write it like this. fx is equal, I could use this one, but it's much easier to use this one here. fx is equal to x minus 2 squared minus 1. So what the inverse is, instead of x, instead of the question, we have the answer. Instead of the answer, we have the question. So when I'm getting the inverse, I just switch these around. So instead of x being here, x is here. Instead of fx being here, um, the inverse of fx is here. So the act of switching it makes this turn into an inverse. That's a function um, with uh, the inverse, an expression for the inverse. But what they really want is this guy to be out on his own here. They want it to be out on its own and equals. So just do a little bit of algebra here. So a little bit of algebra, let's see, we add the one to both sides, x plus one is equal to the inverse of fx minus two squared. Oh, by the way, we, we usually change this to a y just to make it easier. Instead of me having to do all that writing, y is much easier to write. And that's why we use y instead of fx. Very confusing to say. Um, okay, let's get the square root of both sides. We get the square root of x plus one is equal to the inverse of x minus 2. This is plus or minus, except, except we know x is bigger than 8, because I did the domain first. I know x is bigger than 8, so I know this here is bigger than 9, so I don't need plus or minus, because it's it was a plus. <laughs> it was, it's still a plus. The square root of 9, um, or anything bigger, is still a plus, so I don't need plus or minus there. But if you have plus or minus, it's okay, um, once at the end of your question you fix it because the examiner doesn't, uh, doesn't expect you to know x is bigger than 8 yet. So it's fine if you have plus or minus there. So let's just add 2 to both sides then. We get uh, 2 plus square root of x plus 1 is equal to the inverse of fx. And that's it. That's the inverse function right there. And like I said, x is bigger than 8 because we knew from the picture here. Um, and is that it? Uh, oh, there's one more question. I need to rub out a bit of work here. We need to use the gx function that I don't have. Let me rub out a bit here and we'll do that. Okay, so here's gx and they ask us to get a gfx. Uh, what that is, is just g of f of x. So let me show you how you might go about doing this. Um, that is g, um, oh, let me just write this again. g of f of x is equal to, so I know what g does. g just gives 1 over something plus 1. That's what g of x does. g of something is equal to 1 divided by something plus 1. That something could be anything. It doesn't have to be an x. That could be an fx can go here. fx, in fact, it does go here because it's right here. Whatever's in this bracket, go here. So we can write that again as 1 over fx. Oh, let's not use this though. Let's go ahead and use the much better function we know. x minus 2 squared minus 1. And then plus 1. They disappear. In fact, let's do that right now. Because that's, that's our answer. That's uh, g of gfx. Let's write it like they had it. gfx is equal to this. So that's an expression, that's it. Uh, oh, state the range of gfx. The range, so that's the domain, what goes in. The range is what comes out. Obviously in the inverse, go back to the inverse question. The domain and becomes the range, the range becomes the domain. So what is the domain of this? Sorry, the range of this. The domain they tell us already, because we're still in the world where 
where c is equal to 5. So therefore, x is bigger than 5. So we're still in that world, I, I believe. Yeah, the answer agrees with this. Um, so we're still in the world where x is bigger than 5. So let's just work out what's the, what numbers could this be. If we put 5 in, we would get, um, let's call it y just to make it a little easier. Um, x equals 5, y would equal 1 over 9. Do you see what I did there? 5 minus 2 is 3. 3 squared is 9. 1 divided by 9. And let's see, when this gets bigger, when this number gets bigger, it'll, let's say it's 6, this will become 4. We'll become 16. When it's uh, 7, it'll become 5, 25, 1 over 25. It's very linear, and that's, well, it's not linear at all, sorry. It's uh, very clear that just this number down here gets bigger. It just keeps getting bigger. It doesn't cross the zero at any point. Nothing strange happens. So when x gets really big, uh, let's say approaches infinity, y is just going to, well, let's say approach. It's just going to approach 1 over infinity, or infinity squared is just infinity, um, which that just approaches zero. But when we get a really, really big number in the bottom row, we just get really close to zero. So when, when we put this in, the, the, the range, the answers we could possibly get are between 1 over 9, and this will just get bigger and bigger, this number. So that means the whole number will get smaller and smaller. So it's just uh, the, the, let's write it here, GFX is going to be between... Uh, let's see, it's going to be less than this, and it's going to be bigger than zero. It's going to be between those worlds. Let me just make a little room, and I'll draw it here. Again, we'll have just an x, y. We're out here at 5. When I put 5 in, I get 1 over 9. And the bigger numbers we get in, the smaller this gets. And... When I go towards infinity, I'm just going to get closer and closer to zero. So it really just looks like this world here. If you can, it's always great to draw a picture. The examiner loves this. The examiner will forgive mistakes over here if they see this, because they'll be like, oh, I know what you meant. Oh, you wrote the wrong number. You put the wrong direction. That's fine. I know what you meant. You understood it much better if you can draw a picture. So always draw a picture. So that's, there we go, there's the, the domain is five, between five and infinity, and the range is between one over nine and zero. And that's the answer to that question. If you have any follow-up questions to this, because it is a hard, confusing question, I do expect uh, students to have follow-up questions. So if, if you are one of those students, put that question in the comments below, and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching, have a great day.